All right, it's time to catch up with our guy, Michael Tua, Palani Choir basketball analyst. After two home games that Illinois splits, they beat Michigan State 71 to 68, but fall to that pesky Maryland team, Mike. They can't get over uh, the Terrapins, who have won 10 of 13 against Illinois since they've entered the Big Ten. So I think it's pretty obvious, Mike, when you got an, a number in front of your name, you got a target on your back. You had two desperate teams here, Michigan State. We're going to get back on track. And, of course, Maryland with a, a terrible start. This is by far their best resume booster. What was your biggest takeaway from this week at home? Yeah, I think I, I wanted to see how this team would fare against two really top 25 defenses. And both games kind of played out in a way where it was wire to wire. And you were going to be tested in different ways. And when shots aren't falling – what do things look like on the defensive end? And then what does late game execution look like? I thought there were just a lot of things that were exposed. And I think in a good way, because now you can address them. Like there's certain things as conference play goes on, as much as people want to say, oh, the book is out and teams can, well, now like, you know how teams are guarding you, you can adjust as well. Um, and then also defensively, there are just certain things we'll, we'll get into the nitty gritty of it, but just handling specifically Jameer Young in ball screens and why that's so difficult, why this Illinois team made that so difficult for themselves. Uh, but overall, I thought that Michigan State win was a great win because I, I just I wanted to see this team in a close game like that, in a game where you you know didn't have your best stuff, had to win ugly, and they did that. And then the Maryland game was just, you know, a lack of focus. I thought it was a lack of toughness, and uh, that showed itself in, in different ways. So let's start on the offensive side, Mike. Illinois had 1.08 points per possession against Michigan State, 0 0.97 uh, against Maryland. What, what did those two teams, especially Maryland, uh, expose about the Illinois offense? Well, obviously, you know, both teams um, – Maryland started off with some zone, but even at times they had, you know, Reese guarding Rodgers. Uh, Sissoko was on Rodgers. And I thought Illinois did a really good job of exploiting that with Ty Rodgers being aggressive and having the ball in his hands and, and attacking those bigs in the beginning of that Michigan State game. But look, I, the Maryland game specifically, they didn't get bad looks. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, when you have a lack of focus and you have a lack of toughness, there's usually five things that – I think about, and one of those things is finishing around the rim. Like, that is a toughness play. And those misses can be deflating, but you can't let that carry over onto the defensive side. So I thought they were fine offensively against, against Michigan State, um, but even against Maryland, good looks were there. You just have to be able to convert. You're putting so much strain on your defense to have to be – really, 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 really good if you're not going to make those fast break layups, putbacks, um, you know, that 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 was kind of discouraging. And I thought it, it led to some of those offensive woes. Because if you think about that Maryland game, they got off to a 13 to 5 lead. They were up 20 to 11. You know, that ball was moving. They had assists on, you know, six of their first seven baskets or whatever it was. So I, I didn't think it was something that it was like, man, Maryland's doing something specific. It was just they took their foot off the gas and lost focus. And that just, that, that can't happen in a conference game like that. Mike, how do you see it as somebody who's played the game? I've coached it a little bit. How do you see lack of focus, lack of toughness, intensity? Cause Underwood was all about that after this game, Luke Goody and Marcus Damast talked about that. I mean, it's probably going to happen with college kids, especially it happens in the NBA as well. But what are your signs of, okay, this team is not bringing it uh, to the full level tonight. Ball screen coverage. Hmm. That, that's If you want the most overt sign, it's ball screen coverage because that requires communication. And when you're not focused on who is setting the screen, yelling it out, what coverage it is, it becomes really difficult. And then, you know, lack of focus on the glass, the lack of focus on personnel, right? You got Harris Smith. And for some reason, when you want to guard him like he's a shooter, um, you know, you have Jordan Geronimo. And I know both those guys made threes, but you can't guard them in a way that takes you away from 
you know, providing help on Jameer Young, providing help on Julian Reese. That's not to say you're going to sell out and double team, but that's the type of awareness and focus that I'm talking about. Is like it's it's with the scout, it's with your communication, and a lot of that is on the defensive end. And if you can't get stops, then that now that's putting strain on your offense and, and vice versa. So um, that's that's what I saw. And the lack of toughness was was on the glass. I thought Maryland just their their second and third effort um was just was just better and yeah. and that that was also disappointing because you're at home and those are the games that you have to take care of if if you have the goals that you have which is to to be in this race for a Big 10 regular season championship yeah and you know against Michigan State I thought Michigan State threw its its best punch Mike and and, and Illinois responded I don't know if it just comes down to you made a couple more shots in that game or or what it is but uh, what do you think accounts for the difference in, in kind of intensity? Because I, I did not question Illinois' intensity against Michigan State. That was that was a, a I don't know about a heavyweight fight, but that was that was definitely a brawl. Yeah, I think you know one thing that I attribute it to, and this may be going a little bit too granular, but and I don't want to I don't want to single out one guy because there was a, there were a lot of guys that were not on top of their game and focused. Uh, But particularly, Jameer Young got going when Justin Harmon came in the game. Mm -hmm. And I I, I don't know, maybe he was sick. Maybe there was a complete lack of assertiveness, uh, intensity. And what you worry about sometimes, and you shouldn't have to worry about it with an older group, is when minutes start to be guaranteed. Right. Justin Harmon, when his minutes weren't guaranteed and he had to like scratch and claw every time he came into the game because that was what was going to keep him in the game. And then now you're playing 25 minutes a game the last five five games. Like, you know, do like you revert to old habits because I said it before the you know, like even before the season, when we talked about him at Utah Valley State, like there were times where he was disengaged Mm -hmm. defensively and would kind of be standing around and, and wasn't great guarding the ball. I thought he really turned a corner for Illinois this year because you just kind of have to when you're when you're surrounded by that defense to stay afloat. Mm-hmm. And there was miscommunication, like the, the angles of his feet weren't great. Jameer Young started getting going and and that was that was kind of it. So there's there's certain things that that you worry about there where if where if you put in a Dre Gibbs Lawhorn for three minutes, like that's that's when maybe there's a spark. Right. Because you're putting in a guy that is pretty much fighting for his life and trying to scratch and trying to claw. And you got to be you got to be smart with where you do it now. Like that is maybe like a, you know, 1250 left in the second half. Um, Maybe we get two really like great Dre Gibbs Allhorn on the ball, pesky fighting his ass off minutes. And then we can get him out at the under under 12 media whenever that happens. Like that's where I think when when these guys aren't stretched so thin with their minutes because i thought that showed itself against purdue was like there are like five viable bodies now <laughs> and, and and so that's 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 certainly part of it yeah i was going to ask you mike is, is this rotation too short right now I, I get why brad underwood has six seven maybe players he's playing right now especially the monty hansberry banged up um but are guys logging too many minutes are you seeing that on the court i think so um, because really it's, it's seven guys that are logging minutes and six are really logging minutes because yeah. I mean, Dane, I think is eight minutes a game in the last five games. It gets so, high majors, it's like five minutes a game. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, I think you, you have to, and maybe I think they're going to get Moretti kind of ramped up a little bit here. I just coming off that injury that that probably wasn't the game. Jameer, but, too. That, that's not a good matchup for him. No, no, not at all. And you you got to be a little bit more smart with where you probably put him in. That's not – Moretti right now is not a guy you just roll out for 20 minutes regardless of the matchup. Um, but I do think Dre Gibbs Lawhorn is a guy that you saw – I don't want to say he, like, changed the game at Purdue, but he fought. He fought because there's something there's something for him to fight for. And, and that just has to be the mindset for these guys where whether it's fatigue, whether it's missing shots and all that stuff compounds, you know, you need a leader. You need somebody out there that's going to rally everybody and be like, hey, we got to lock in. Just take this possession by possession. 
and and put our best foot forward. And then, hey, if they score on us, all right, well, let's go back down and get our best offensive possession. Because if you have that mindset, maybe you can put the ball in the basket a little more to set your, you know, to set your defense. And then it all starts to snowball in a good way. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think you got to find ways to incorporate some other guys. I mean, Amani was getting minutes a little bit. Terrence was obviously getting minutes. And now this thing got really thin really quick. And and you don't want to try to like, I get you want to squeeze as much out of the orange as you can, but um, but you know, <laughs> like you, you have to find ways to 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 counteract and, and balance out that rotation. I, I want to get to you um about ideal roles maybe for danger, Gibbs Lawhorn and, and some of those guys moving forward. But I, I didn't mention this in the post-game podcast. I wish I had, but Brad made an interesting comment about how Friday was disjointed with practice and all that. And that's of course the day all his teammates uh, all the teammates went to the the hearing for for Terrence Shannon. I mean, this week is a reminder. I mean, Mike, that this team has a little margin for error without Terrence Shannon, right? They're two and two in the Big Ten since Terrence Shannon was suspended. I think we would have thought something like that, right? But you know, a game like against Maryland, it, it was obvious like you could use him uh, at some points. And you know what, these guys have done an unbelievable job of, of focusing and, and of adjusting. But the impact is felt, whether it's distraction off the court or if it's just not having an All-American on the court. Yeah, I mean, it just distraction is a distraction, and yeah. it's certainly human. Yeah, it's it's a, there's a human element of it. Um, these are college kids. Uh, these are these are guys that you know. Some of them probably roommates mm -hmm. with Terrence. So as much as you want to like try to escape it, you you really can't. Um, and they're obviously showing support for him by going by going down to the Springfield. But um yeah, I mean, look, after that FDU and Northwestern game, and I think I said it on the podcast where it's like, hey, they, those were two teams that the way the way they played and their style was going to really lend itself to like that particular group, even without Terrence, because it's post trapping, it's passing out of the post trap. Um, you know, neither of them had very dynamic bigs. Uh, so you, you were able to do some things on, on both ends and then you got to Purdue and you put up a, a good fight, but they, they jumped on you. Um, so now like as you go through the big 10, I think after those the FDU Northwestern game, it was like, Hey, maybe the final four is back on. <laughs> and, and I think in this league, it's going to be tough. Cause as you're man, as you're trying to manage these distractions, or it's like, is he coming back? Is he not going to come back? If he does come back, is it for 10 days? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, like there's all of that going on and you just you just have to do your best as a team to try to ice out all that noise. And it's it's hard because now for this team, how tough do you want to be when there is a built in excuse? Right. Like if they falter, it's well, you know, they, they didn't have their their first team all American. So no, we get it. It's like yeah. this team's too talented for that. And and they have too many old, older players, experienced players, um, to like go in the tank. They get that just that just can't happen. But I, I will say you have to lock in because as much as as much as people want to talk about um the Big Ten from the standpoint of like, ah, you know, six, seven bids, it's a down it's a down league. I think at the top maybe, but the middle is still talented. So you're, you're, you're going to have nights where if you feel like you, you don't have your best stuff, like there's going to be teams that, that are going to make you pay for that. So yeah. it was a long winded way of saying that you just game after game in this conference, no matter what the distractions are, you got to find, you got to find a way to, to lock in. This episode of the Atlanta Inquirer podcast is brought to you by better help. What are some things you want to keep the same about yourself or your life in 2024? Where are you already crushing it? Think opposite of new year, new you. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Maybe you finally organize one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, 
designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash Illini today to get 10% off your first month. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash Illini to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Illini. Yeah, because uh, at Michigan, not easy. Home against Rutgers, I'd hope they'd win that one. But at Northwestern, home against Indiana, at Ohio State, home against Nebraska, at Michigan State, like these aren't going to be easy games um, because even if there's not a ton of teams, you're like, yeah, definite tournament team. It's not a lot of teams that like you can say, yeah, Illinois is just way, 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 way better than. Um, all right, Dane Danger, what is his ideal role? Because he did give a spark, had some bad defensive moments against Maryland. We know he can be a productive player. Um, we've talked about why Coleman Hawkins is so important to this team and, and his impact and why they're so much better on the court. What is the ideal role for Dane Dange on this team? Because it, it feels like Brad Underwood's still trying to figure that out. I, I know I'm like the quote unquote analyst here. Jeremy, I don't know. I don't either. I, I really I have a good answer there. I, I don't. I think if you want to say what the ideal role is for him, he's probably playing it. Right now, be like that, and that's just that's just the reality with playing Coleman at the five. I know we've I know we've talked about that a bunch, but shoot, even when Coleman fouled out, they went with Gary at the five. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, I think he is a guy right now that in certain spots can give your offense a spark. See the break in case of emergency offensive option, kind of Georgie a couple years ago. Yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's a good uh, I think that's a good good way to frame it. But I, I will say the difference between Georgie and Dane is, you know, Georgie wasn't like a great defender. He talked his butt off. Yeah, and he communicated. Yeah, that that is something that that you could hear through the TV with Georgie, and that just has to be for Dane. I think to try to get extended minutes. It's just going to depend on what he values when he gets on the court. Because for him right now, yeah, you might get some post-entry touches. You may run the floor a couple times, get some rim runs. But right now, man, it has got to be – I, I got to be this this good in ball screen coverage. I got to be – I got to communicate. I got to be just – you will not keep me off the glass. And it's really got to be those two, three things for him. Because sometimes when Imani Hansberry goes in – to me, that seems like the two, three things he's thinking about. Yep. He's like, I don't care. I mean, you don't even have to, I don't even have to touch the ball, mm -hmm. but I'm going to run. I'm going to rebound. I'm going to defend, or at least I'm going to try to defend. Um, all of that has to, has to factor in for Dane if he wants to continue to get, you know, some extended minutes. Uh, but again, I go back to it. I'm not sure what that looks like with, with, with Coleman at the five. All right, Dre Gibbs Allhorn, Nico Moretti, Amani Hansberry. If if Brad can try to extend the bench a little bit, like what, what do the roles look like for those guys moving forward? Yeah, I think there was this I see a lot of stuff on social media with Nico where it's like help is on the way. Yeah. Um I'm not sure that's entirely fair to Nico. Cause if you if you remember, I mean, he had kind of the one game. He hasn't played anybody. Right? Like ever. At any high um, major. Really. Right. So that's just, that's a lot to ask of a guy, not only who hasn't done it, but who's coming off of a foot injury. So, you know, are there times where maybe you can get him in there and in, in, certain, in certain spurts because you're turning the ball over and you want somebody that can kind of set the table a little bit? Maybe. Uh, Dre Gibbs Lawhorn right now to me is a guy that's like, hey, we need a spark like an energy spark boost, someone who's just going to kind of get in and get in there and kind of stick his nose in there. I think that's, that's the role for, for each of them, but mm -hmm. both of them have to guard or they're not going to play. So there's just, I mean, these other guys are too good defensively. Now, Justin Harmon wasn't great on that end um, against, against Maryland. So maybe that opens up some opportunity, but uh, for those two guys, no matter what it is offensively, defensively it's what are the matchups how do we feel about those matchups with those two guys 
and how can they fare on the, on the defensive end? I know he didn't have the cleanest game. He had five turnovers. A lot of them led directly to Maryland points. But I just want to acknowledge five games into the Big Ten schedule, only Zach Eady, excuse me, is, is scoring more points per game during Big Ten play than Marcus Domask. Eady at 23 points a game, Domask at 22.8. Man, he, he's been impressive, Mike. His ability to get shots, I know a lot of it was later in the game, but he kept Illinois in the game there late when they were really struggling offensively. So uh, anything new on Marcus Damask? Well, I'm seeing a lot of these kind of midseason lists come out with transfers and who's the best transfer pickups. And you see Hunter Dickinson, you see, you know, a number of these other guys. I don't, I'm not really sure where this Illinois team would be without him. Um, in terms of when you lose Terrence, having a guy that can step in and be like, 22 a game in big 10 play. I mean, that is, that's, that's nuts because as much as like Quincy Gary had it going and as much as Coleman Hawkins kind of had it going as well, like those are two guys that have to be kind of beneficiaries of guys breaking down the defense inside out, you know, picking pops. Like those are guys that have to rely on others defensively. They can't necessarily like, it's not their strength to just like go get their own. Yeah. The mass strength is he can, he can go get his own. Now, I think that Maryland game was his worst floor game yeah. of of probably the season, given the circumstances. I mean, the amount of times that he jumped in the air to pass and turned it over, like there, I think he had three or four live ball yeah. turnovers, and a couple of them led directly to Maryland run out layups. So that just that can't happen. Like as much as he's kind of getting into like the scoring, uh, being such a scoring threat, he still has to be mindful of just taking care of the ball and making sound decisions uh, and just, just being under control, uh, which is kind of what he always does. And it's like, Hey, you just play off of two feet. You don't have to get caught up in the air. Uh, But, but yeah, overall, I mean, talk about return on an investment. Um, (laughs) Yeah. like uh, I've seen some leagues start to do a newcomer of the year on top of freshman of the year. Like he would be it right now uh, in the big 10. Like, Ben Creaky has been good. Um, yeah, Kamwa has been good. Like, been good. but but I think Damascus head and shoulders. Store has been really good. Store has been really good. Yeah, I mean, store store would probably those two guys are probably cool aware. Yeah, that, the that two is- that are, the two that are up there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think he's just been so solid, and we'll see because this is a lot of usage mm-hmm. for him. And can he stay healthy, right? Can he um, – He's the top of the scouting not, report, right? Like, Yeah, top of the scouting report. Can you not lose steam? Uh, now, the guys that are top of the scouting report that are matchup issues, uh, and it's not like, hey, they do something specific, I, that helps Marcus mm-hmm. because he can – I mean, I look at Doug McDaniel. I mean, those are, that's – we'll see how they try to guard Illinois, but there's a lot of games left on the schedule where he can go into back down mode – um, he just has to continue to be uh, relatively safe with the ball and, and not have that lead to to runouts for the other team. All right, Mike. Uh, game at Michigan, they ended their six-game losing streak by beating Ohio State, who just could not make shots. Uh, they, they had a huge 16-0 run to take the lead. The Buckeyes did, but not able to close it out. Uh, and Michigan will have Doug McDaniel available. It's one of the most interesting things I've ever seen, a – Suspension on the road, but he gets to play home games. Uh, he's a good player uh, as their point guard. So what are the keys uh, against the Wolverines, who probably feel a little bit better uh, after seeing what Illinois uh, did against Maryland and, and what they did against Ohio State? Yeah, well, the, that suspension is the most Michigan thing I think we've, <laughs> we've ever seen. It just can't be – nothing is normal with, with them. Um but look, I, the one thing I'm looking at is how you guard Doug McDaniel in ball screens. Mm-hmm. Because with Jameer Young, here's the thing, and I meant to make this point earlier, and it's it's relevant for this Michigan game. This Illinois team, at times, they ice on the sideline. And when I say ice, I mean, hey, if I'm, if I'm dribbling the ball down the right side of the floor on the wing, when, you know, when a big comes up to set a screen for me to come off with my left hand, from the right side, these Illinois players will flip their hips and force towards the sideline. So they're basically keeping you on that same side of the floor. 
Okay. And they did that a few times with Jameer Young. So you do that on occasion. You switch one through five on occasion. You switch one through four on occasion. You play drop coverage on occasion. When you have all these, these different things that you do because you are versatile as a defense, you have to communicate. Or else, or else the guy guarding the ball screen doesn't know, like they're not supposed to be the one turning and looking to see who's coming to screen. Like I can't turn and look and be like, okay, it's Julian Reese this time. Okay, it's Coleman back there with me. We're probably going to switch this. Oh, it's Dane back there. We're probably going to be in drop coverage. Oh, it's Geronimo this time. So this is about to be a switch. That has to be yelled from the person that's coming up and setting the screen. Who's guarding them? Like if I'm guarding Kamwa or is it or is it Taurus Reed coming up and setting a screen? That has to be yelled out loud at home on the road because you are putting the guy guarding the screen in the worst position possible. And then the guy guarding the screen, you are guarding your man straight up. I am guarding Doug McDaniel straight up until I get told what to do. Don't predetermine it as a ball screen defender because that killed Justin Harmon against Jameer Young. It was like, oh, like a screen might be coming, so I'm, I'm just going to flip my hips early. Mm -hmm. And then there was no ball screen help from a big, and then Jameer Young gets right down the lane for a layup like two or three times. And then you're you're flipping your hips. And then when there is a switch, like if it's if it's like if it's um Terrence Williams, right? Or it's Burnett coming to set a screen. Like that, if they slip it, if they ghost it, if they set it, it doesn't matter. It's a switch. There were too many times in that Maryland game where you know you had Dante Scott come up and, and like slip out of a screen. And two ran with the ball or two ran with Dante Scott. Like that has to be automatic. So that has to be communicated. So that is the one thing for me. And then just you, you can't get punked like you did against Maryland. Because the one guy that I look at, Will Cheddar, like he's a guy that if you don't want to box out, if you don't want to make the toughness plays, he will do it. Mm -hmm. So, and then like you have to make Taurus Reed guard. Um, you have to make Doug McDaniel guard, and we'll see if they if you can put them in different apps in different actions. And and then the last point I'll make is just being aware of personnel, shooters, non shooters. If it's a non shooter, okay, I can help a little bit. Um, once that non shooter makes a three, that doesn't all of a sudden make him a shooter. Mm -hmm. So just being aware of that stuff and having focus, especially on the road. Um, and, and then you know the hope is that you can come out of there with a with a road win. I don't care who the opponent is, and with Michigan right now. They have talent. Yep. I, I said it before. Do you remember last week? I said you got Maryland and Michigan. Both teams are talented, and they're both yep. at this like whatever. Let's just let's just let cut it loose. Yeah. Point. And that makes them dangerous. Com was good. Doug McDaniel's yeah. good. like they got some talented players. That's why this has kind of been a train wreck so far this year. They're one of the most underachieving teams, but Maryland was coming in to uh, Sunday. Speaking of Ohio State, why aren't they better? I I, I like the pieces uh, on that team. How are they two and four to start Big Ten play here? I think there's a couple of reasons. I, I earlier in the year when I watched them play Santa Clara in the, the Emerald Coast Classic in Destin, Santa Clara would just like sell out on ball screens and try to trap. And then, you know, you had Zed Key and Akpara running to the rim, pulling in the defense. Now Ohio State, Jamison Battle, all these guys, they're just shooting like tee up threes. Mm hmm. And then now teams have shifted to either like switching one through five or kind of sitting back and drop or zoning them at times, which Illinois won't do that. And it just, it bothers them because they don't necessarily have, in my opinion, like a dynamic wing scorer. Mm -hmm. Jamison Battle's good, like kind of in the way Quincy Gary is, where it's like catch and shoot, rip drive, can do those things. And then I, I don't know. I mean, I think is Bruce Thornton like a true one? Like is Roddy Gale a true two? Right. Like to me, it's like they're missing they're missing something at the top because Bruce Thornton would be a really good two, Roddy Gale would be a really good three, and Jamison Battle would be a really good four. Unfortunately, they're one, two, three right now. Mm -hmm. And I and I just I don't know if there's enough there. And then last year it was borderline impossible for a team that was a basically a top 25 offense in the country to be four and 16 in conference play. Like that is like, that is how bad their defense was last year. Bryce Sensible had a lot to do with that. 
Yeah. But now it's like there's times where they revert back to that. And and just they cannot get a stop. And and that is that is hurting them. And I don't know. I know they got a new AD coming in from what it sounds like. And their schedule is light coming up. Like I, I would have to go back and reference it, but I, it flashed on the screen yesterday when they were playing Michigan. I was like, oh my gosh. But you could look at that one of two ways. That is either going to be wins, or if some of those are losses, it's going to get louder mm-hmm. in Columbus for sure. Yeah. Who finishes higher in the Big Ten of the two teams Illinois just played, Michigan State or, or Maryland? Michigan State. Yeah. Um, I think Michigan State, again, don't quote me. This is somewhat off the top of my head. I think they have – and Minnesota's better, but I still think Minnesota's one of the bottom teams in the in the Big Ten despite where they're at in, in conference. They still have Minnesota twice. Um, they get Penn State again. There's another, there's another team I think they have – twice again that's t- kind of towards the bottom of the Big Ten. Uh, I think they might still have Rutgers again, but th- I think they just have a lighter schedule. So I think Michigan State uh, – I also think Michigan State's just a better team. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I think that they'll they'll finish higher than, than Maryland. But I think Maryland's – look, uh, once again this year, I think they're 9-1 and one at home or 8-1 and one at home. That's a really tough place for teams to win. I know, I know Purdue won there, but um, – I think both these teams. I wouldn't be surprised if both these teams are in the top six when it's all said and done. Maryland just got forced to shoot. You know, Illinois did that in the first half uh, for the first part of the first half, and it worked out well for them. It's a terrible shooting team, but uh, they're athletic, they're big, uh, and they got two dudes like like Julian Reese and and Jameer Young are all Big Ten caliber players, and and we know Dante Scott uh, is a pretty good complement to those guys as well. So Illinois, two and two in its last – Four Big Ten games, we brought that up. How do you feel this team still stacks up in the Big Ten as we wrap up here, Mike? I, I think they're, they're still a top four team in the league. Um, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be right up there. Now, Wisconsin, they just – I mean, they just keep – adding A.J. Storer, I mean, that is something that they just – they needed. I, I talk about dynamic wing scorer, like something that Ohio State – really needs and Wisconsin has that and they already have guys that value taking care of the ball that play hard that know where to be defensively and AJ Storr is a guy that came over and that wasn't necessarily a strong suit on the defensive end he's starting to figure it out um you know just kind of assimilating there and and uh yeah but again I I mentioned it I mentioned it before where I view Illinois as as a top four team like a double buy team in the big 10, but you're still going to have to go out and prove that. And you're going to have to prove that against this, like the, again, the middle of the big 10 to me, like Maryland, Northwestern, Ohio state, Nebraska, Iowa, like those are not teams that you can just go in and be like, we can play 50% today and we can get 50% of our best game today. I just don't, I, those teams are too talented now, like Nebraska, they're too talented now. Um, that's, that like they can make you pay. They can shoot the ball. They can that they they Hoiberg nailed it in the portal with some of these additions. And uh, I know you beat Northwestern uh, handedly at home, but like that's another team that on any given night with Boo Booey and um, you know if they do lock in with their with their post trapping, they can they can get you. And Ohio State uh, for as many lapses as they have defensively, and sometimes they don't play with a ton of toughness on any given night, they can hit 14 threes. So, you know, you got to you, you got to take it one game at a time in Big Ten play, but understand that it's not about the opponent. Um, each one of these teams has a chance to to knock you off if you don't bring your A game. You, but you have to bring that. You have to be focused and locked in. What's the scout assignment sound? All of that. If you want to achieve what you want to achieve. Yeah, and we certainly learned that this past week. Illinois is a, a big resume booster for a lot of these teams looking for resume boosters. Michael Tulip, you're the goods, man. We'll talk to you next week. Appreciate it, man.